Open letter to Pope Francis. Are you planning to redefine church doctrine? By Catholic theologian and author Kelly Bowring. October 1st, 2014. Dear Pope Francis, Since becoming Pope, many of your actions and statements have raised concerns among not a few Catholic Cardinals. I too have raised some issues previously, particularly about how you seem to be fulfilling the credible Catholic prophecies of our times. The center of the growing concern is focused on what seems to be your intentions to change or alter Catholic doctrine through new pastoral concessions. As a Catholic theologian, the Church teaches that I am permitted to raise questions regarding the content of your interventions. Thus, I would like to do so in this open letter. Just raising questions. I begin by asking whether Benedict XVI was referring to you and your cohort when he famously stated at the beginning of his pontificate, Pray that I don't flee for fear of the wolves. Are you planning to mislead many by first focusing on the family, changing the meaning of marriage, compromising sexual morality and life issues, as it is the foundation of society in the domestic church? Why have you been de-emphasizing the doctrines of homosexuality, cohabitation, abortion, and contraception? Why are you strategically placing church leaders in key places that promote doctrinal compromise and change, and thus are already causing confusion? And in the bigger scheme of things, why does it seem that changing laws in our countries are being instigated in unison with the changes being proposed in our churches, with both sets of new laws blending together to redefine and welcome every kind of sin? Could this become a question of papal validity? It is objectively impossible to change, dismiss, or compromise even one doctrine of the faith. As I've discussed in another article, the Church teaches that even a pope can enter into personal heresy if he refuses to believe in even one Church doctrine. And if so, he de facto invalidates himself as pope. Is there a single doctrine of the faith that you refuse to believe in, or are trying to change, or will in fact soon change or abandon? Pope Francis, you may not change, alter, or dismiss even one doctrine without dismantling the whole deposit of faith itself. James 2.10 states, For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one particular point, has become guilty in respect to all of it. You may update or change church traditions, as many in the church hierarchy have done validly, but you cannot change the church's doctrine, not even one iota, not even regarding the least significant doctrines, including communion for remarried, a church blessing for same-sex couples, changing the meaning of the sacraments, without de facto invalidating your pontificate. Are you leading the church toward the great apostasy and schism? Pope Francis, are you organizing a new evangelical movement which will be announced in stages and with a strategy of gradualness so as to avoid creating too many questions but which will be received as a breath of fresh air by many? Are you forming a false ecumenical fellowship as part of a newly renovated church, seeking to unite the churches of the world in a new world church, which will lead to new rituals and abominations? Is the false prophet among us? Pope Francis, there are many biblical teachings and prophecies about the false prophet, some of which you seem to be fulfilling. Why are you vigorously supporting dissenting bishops who are proposing heretical pastoral concessions and, in effect, seeking to tamper with sacred doctrine, while you are ruthlessly dismissing, demoting, and disempowering other bishops who are known to be faithful to doctrine? Why do you offer tremendous pastoral sensitivity to people who don't even want to practice the faith and are bent on offending it? 
while you've directed massive antagonism toward those who do. Why does it seem more and more to some that a diabolical, though intentionally nebulous, disorientation of the Church's doctrine is afoot under your pontificate? The Bible warns of false teachers who lead God's people astray with their lies and their recklessness. Jesus tells the parable about the weeds and the wheat, whereby the cockle seeds of false doctrine so resemble the weeds of true doctrine that even farmers, theologians, apologists, bishops, have difficulty distinguishing them. For the devil likes to mask falsehood with truth, to use virtue to justify vice, and to twist doctrine to justify heresy so that even the faithful are deceived. Pope Francis, are you the wolf in sheep's clothing that the Catholic prophecies have warned us about? Are you the prophesied false prophet of lies and deception who will lead the church into schism? Are you the anti-John the Baptist and precursor of the Antichrist who will rule the world? Will you soon be at death's door as the book of Revelation prophesizes? Only then, just as if a miracle has taken place, seem to have risen from the dead? Two sources of private revelation are particularly worth considering here. First, at La Salette, Our Lady warned that Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. The church will be eclipsed and we won't know who the true Pope is. And second, at Akita, Our Lady warned that the deceit of Satan will infiltrate into the church and we will see good cardinals divided against bad cardinals. And there are many other credible Catholic prophecies that give insight, warning, and direction about our times, ones that every Catholic should be aware of. It is quite possible for a master deceiver to fool the Catholic faithful. Father Maciel, founder of the Legionaries of Christ, with his seeming orthodoxy, humility, and holiness, successfully deceived even a Pope Saint, John Paul II. And the Catechism warns that in the latter times, a great part of the faithful will be misled, specifically through a religious deception. Pope Francis, will you so soon hold a referendum that will adapt the laws of the church and condone new practices of sin sympathetic to twisted human rights and then force a new oath pledge upon the church to this new false doctrine? If you are the false prophet seeking to steal souls through deceit, then you will lose. The book of Revelation says that both the false prophet and the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire where they, were, they will suffer forever. Venerable Fulton Sheen said, Evil may have its hour, but God will have his day. Much of what will happen to the church in these times has been foretold, and we know that God will allow these abominations for a good reason. The church, like Christ, will suffer her passion, crucifixion, and death, only then to enter her resurrection into the new era of peace, as Our Lady of Fatima promised. And we know there will be no defeat for the remnant faithful, who will stand firm in the faith and uphold the truth, the Word of God, even in the face of adversity, heresy, apostasy, and even schism. Pope Francis, to whatever defense you may have or make concerning the questions I have raised, time will tell the truth of things. To the Catholic faithful, we live in dark and dangerous times where our faith and morals are being attacked and repressed on all sides, most sinisterly from within the church herself. St. Paul warned in his first letter to Timothy that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits 
and doctrines of demons through the pretensions of liars. Solid Catholic prophecy indicates the time of the great battle foretold in sacred scripture to take place in the latter times is in fact upon us today. Pray for the grace to discern the truth. Those who separate themselves from the church in these times by compromising doctrine, even if following a pope, will no longer be united to the true church. Do not allow a false doctrine to be imposed on you. Even if you're wrongly accused of lack of tolerance, lack of compassion, lack of love, lack of respect for human rights, or for being unjustifiably judgmental. The fact is that there may be a devious plan unfolding to mislead you into the great apostasy, the first seal of the book of Revelation, and it will be the greatest deceit in human history. So examine everything you are told from this point forward, even from Pope Francis. Vigilance is now required. If any new teachings claim that Jesus condones sin, then you will know that is a lie. The truth is that Jesus always and clearly detests all sin unequivocally, though he loves the sinner. And Jesus would never compromise his truth. In closing, Pope Francis, if you intend to accommodate any doctrine of the faith to today's profane and secular world, or even de-emphasize a certain doctrine, such as to produce a new tolerance to sin, the church will not join you. The faithful will not concede. For such apostasy would invalidate your pontificate and make it more evident that you are the false prophet the Bible warned us about. If this happens, the church's legitimate hierarchy will make the faithful aware of such matters clearly at that time and how we should best respond in good faith. But for now, only love, obedience, and prayers for you, Pope Francis, while remaining rightly alert and vigilant as to the prophetic signs of the times at hand. Sincerely in Christ, Dr. Kelly Bowring.